previously on the Modeler Chronicles. Hello again, my YouTube friends. In the previous video, I completed construction on the cockpit. Now it's time to move on to the rest of the build. To start things off, I mixed up some oil paints with some mineral spirits to create a thick wash that I applied over all of the landing gear bay parts. As I said before, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just experimenting, trying to make things not look so white. I used several colors here to try to make a worn look, make it dirty and grimy, and hopefully give it some character. I also grabbed some Vallejo black and white paint to highlight some of the details in the landing gear bays. I wanted to give some of the pipes and the hoses a little bit of a highlight. After painting all of the pieces of the nose gear, it was time to assemble them. They went together okay, it was a little bit difficult, I had a lot of paint on the contact surfaces, I ended up using some super glue to get it all together. But since all the walls were pretty flat, I was able to get it together with hardly any issues. After that I glued it to the cockpit and then slid the whole structure inside of the nose piece. Glued it in and then I realized I forgot to put in another piece. and. Just to double check, I tried to get it to fit, and it's not possible to fit it from the outside. What are you gonna do? So that means that I can't use the ladder. Oh well. I think the nose gear bait turned out pretty good, a lot better than what I did on my F-16 model a while back. I'm pretty proud of it. For being my first time really detailing something like that, I think I did okay. Next it was time to move on to the other parts of construction. The intakes on this model are a little complicated. The first thing I had to do was fill in some ejector pin marks. I used the same tube of tester's putty to kind of fill those in as best I could. These two pieces that make up the first part of the intake, they go together really well and there's hardly a seam on the inside, which is really nice. These pieces are molded from multiple sides and they have a little bit of a molding line that had to be sanded down. Then I used the razor saw to rescribe some of the panel lines around the corner where the line was. And I think it turned out okay. Next it was on to priming a few parts that were going to go on the inside. All of these engine thingies. And while I was in the paint booth, I decided to try 
painting a lacquer based paint. I'm trying out this Alclad burnt metal on the exhaust nozzles and I really like the color and I like how thin the paint goes down. It's really smooth. It's completely different to the acrylics I've been using. After that it was time to start some sub assemblies. And of course I'm so good at filming, my hand's always in the way. Maybe if I flip the screen it'll help. Uh, nope. These little fin thingies on the bottom, they didn't quite fit at first. I had to do some trimming on the tabs, just something to be aware of. Once you trim those, they sit flat. And they glue on without a problem. This is one of the most satisfying things about modeling. I love watching the panel liners soak into the individual creases and corners of the different details. I could watch this all day. A few months ago when they announced that Model Masters was no longer going to be manufacturing the acrylic paints, I went over to Hobby Lobby and I bought all of their stock. It was all on sale, it was on clearance, and I really like this red color. This is another one of those things that's just so satisfying to do. Paint red. I like it. So, have you ever made a rookie mistake? Somewhere along the line, I learned that wet sanding can help make things more smooth than dry sanding. And I also heard that it's really good to wipe your model down with rubbing alcohol to clean it up. And somehow I crossed those two ideas, and I decided to do some wet sanding with alcohol. I don't know why I did that. 
Well, these Vallejo paints don't really like that. So I ended up having to repaint my wings. Well, I'll never do that again. Dry fitting pieces when you're model building is always a good idea, but on this model it's especially important. With these bigger assemblies going together, sometimes there's little tabs and things that don't line up correctly, and you end up having to just cut those off to get them to fit. It was really hard to get the two halves of the fuselage to seat together properly, and it was even harder to get the nose to meet correctly with both of them. So I found that working on this one section at a time was the right way to do it. Put a little bit of glue in one section, hold it down, keep it clamped for a few minutes until it hardens, then go on to the next section, and then little by little I worked my way around the entire fuselage. Getting the nose section to seat right with the rest of the fuselage was not easy. In fact, I don't think there's any part that actually fit together perfectly. There was pretty much a gap all the way around that I had to fill. And the way the pieces butted up against each other, they weren't really flush. So I had to do some sanding and filling. I used some Tamiya transparent blue to tint the windshield a little bit. Some of the pictures I've seen show that this is supposed to be green, but I didn't have any green and I was too impatient to wait for paint in the mail or to go buy some. Painting all of the missiles and rockets and bombs was a lot of fun. Um, I ended up repainting them a couple times though because I didn't like the way they look. I started off with a black primer and then added all the various colors later.
Then it was time to start priming the whole model. Even though the end goal is to have a black plane, I wanted to do some tone variations. So I actually started with a gray primer just to get everything all uniform. And then I went in and did some variation with some black primer around the panel lines. And then I used some airbrush stencils to add little marks and kind of break up the surface a little bit. Most of that work doesn't actually show up in the final result as you'll see at the end of the video, but it's still there and maybe it helped a little bit. You can be the judge. The inspiration for the paint job that I wanted to give this model, it came from some pictures of some F4 Phantoms that are in like a, like an airplane graveyard. They had the same paint scheme and they were old and faded and they were chipped and some of the paint was falling off and I thought that would be a really cool way to make the model look more interesting and it would give me an opportunity to practice some more skills. So that's what I did. So this kit had a lot of decals. The paint scheme I chose didn't have as many as some of the other ones, but there were still a lot. And there's even more if you want to add the decals to the weapons. After applying all the details, I gave it a coat of clear gloss varnish. And then I went in and I started doing some weathering effects. I started doing some chipping with some Vallejo paint. I think this was aluminum. And I just went around some of the panel lines and tried to add a little bit of chipping where I thought it would look normal. And here we go again, trying to use some oil paints, make some washes and kind of fill in some of the panel lines. Again, this was kind of hit or miss, but it was a good experience and I learned a lot. And I think that's what counts.
And here we go, the beginning of the end. Everything's been painted and weathered and sealed and it's ready to be put together. I went ahead and put all of the extra little pieces on including all of the weapons, all of the weapons pylons, the tails, and all those other thingies that still needed to be put on, the air brakes, and the canopy. Most of these pieces went together with no problem. I used super glue for most of them because all of the surfaces that needed to be glued were already painted. And the Tamiya Extra Thin doesn't seem to work very well with the paint. Another one of the most satisfying parts of model building is taking off masking tape. I love doing this, especially when the paint job actually looks good. I think the windshield on this turned out okay. And the last touches were finishing up the cockpit, putting the seats in, adding the canopy, and we are good to go. Enjoy the final result. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your comments and feedback on how I'm doing. Any suggestions you might have are more than welcome. If you like the content on my channel, please consider adding a like and maybe subscribing. It would be more than appreciated. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.